everyone. Welcome to Grammy Museum Experience Prudential Center's mini masterclass. My name is Mark Conklin. I'm the Director of Artist Relations and Programming at the Grammy Museum Experience Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey, the East Coast home of the Grammy Museum. Although our doors are closed, we're continuing our mission of educating and hopefully inspiring our youth and adults to create their own music or learn about a possible career in the music industry. So we've launched our mini masterclass series where we'll talk with artists and music industry professionals from all different genres. We'll be asking five questions in five minutes about their career, their craft, and their inspiration. Afterward, we wanna hear from you. We want you to apply something you've learned or that's inspired you and create some music of your own and share it with us. I'll be back at the end of the discussion to let you know how to do that. But first, let's meet our next guest. Okay, welcome back everybody to Mini Masterclass. Today, we're very excited to have Gracie Abrams. She's been named an artist to watch by Pigeons and Planes, Fader and ID, and crowned one of seven breakout female musicians by Vogue UK. She's the Interscope recording artist, Gracie Abrams. Gracie, thank you so much for being with us on Mini Masterclass. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, really enjoying uh, listening to your music the last few days, getting to know you uh, a little bit musically, and it's just fantastic. So we're excited to have mm. you here. Um, thank you. I, I don't to deserve to be here. So <laughs> thanks for uh, squeezing me in. <laughs> uh, you certainly do. Um, so let's jump in. Um, you know, what do you think are the, the, the generally the skills and the qualities that someone needs to be successful at this and to, and to kind of have success and to have a career? What have you seen are the kind of the general qualities? Um, I am learning every day as like, I, I, I think that um, I'm lucky to be able to do this for work right now, but I don't think I've earned a career yet. And um, so I'm kind of actively trying to pay attention to, um, you know, anyone when I'm in a room with people that have been doing this for, you know, sometimes longer than I've been alive for. <laughs> Um, the qualities that I've, I've noticed and that I try to practice is, um, you know, like one, just, just being very actively listening to the people that you're around, especially when it comes to songwriting, which, um, to me up until the past year and a half has been a really, uh, kind of like isolated process. And so I think, um, being like a, a team player to a degree while, also really knowing yourself as as best as you can and and knowing why you're in a room and and kind of being intentional about your storytelling for me uh i i think has been a huge um a huge deal and then also in terms of like being a, a young woman in this industry right now um i have found that what's kept me kind of like sane is working with people that you really trust and that um, are there for you when things aren't going super well for whatever reason, like people that are um, genuinely reliable. And uh, I also think that keeping people in your life who are not in this industry is also hugely important because it's so strange and it's not relatable often. And um, you can't like pay people to care for you in ways that your family and friends will. So that's, that's what I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'm yes, learning like so, <laughs> so all the time learning. Yeah. Yes. A little bit of reality. It's always, uh, <laughs> it's always good to have around a lot, you. A lot of reality is important. <laughs> um, what's the part of this so far that you, that you love the most? Like what's the thing that, that draws you to this and, and keeps you in it even when it's difficult? Um, well, whether or not I was lucky enough to like sign a, a deal and, and release music um, through a label and kind of like with all the resources that come with that, I would still be writing as much as I am now. Um, selfishly, it's like self-care for me. It's my outlet. And so that is what keeps, it's the only part, frankly, that like I genuinely love. And I, I, I feel like I'm adjusting every single time there's a a new release um, or an opportunity or a project or whatever it is, everything that isn't the writing is what I feel like I have to work hardest at to like kind of get a grip on because it's not the reason that I wanted to do this. It's like the reason I love music so much is because from a super, super young age, like I just discovered that writing is the way that I can kind of process my 
you know, feelings and experiences uh, in the best and kind of like healthiest way. And so I, every day I'm so grateful to be able to like have these hours in my day kind of like allotted for what I would be doing super late at night if I didn't have the time during the day because of something else, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's super, it's super lucky. Yeah. I'm curious about your writing process. Are you like a, an everyday kind of like ham and egg or like you get up and do it or are you more these days like when you're feeling something like for you what's that that process um this year's been strange obviously for everyone but it's definitely affected my um writing process because I think I used to uh be a lot more anxious to like if if I was out somewhere to come home and have the time by myself to sit down and spend X number of hours writing because I hadn't had that time during the day. And, and obviously being home, being lucky enough to work from home uh, is obviously a, a crazy blessing, but at the same time, it's been very strange, just like psychologically in terms of how, uh, it's almost like the amount of time I have to myself right now is, or was for a little while in the fall, um, it didn't serve me uh, creatively. Um, and I think like, maybe that's not true because now I feel like I'm writing constantly and I can't stop, but it, I definitely went through the longest bout of writer's block that I've, that I've had ever um, as a result of being by myself. Um, so normally it kind of was like an everyday thing and then it, it stopped for a little <laughs> while, but now as of the past like month and a half, I've been back on, on that, that same grind. So it feels good. Good. Um, yeah. yeah, it does. It does ebb and flow for sure. Uh, yeah. What's something that uh, we call it a pro tip, but this is something that um, you apply, whether it's to performing or writing or in the studio, just something that yeah. you've learned that you use for yourself that you can impart to our viewers and they might be able to use for their own craft. Yeah, I, um, I really encourage journaling like above all else. And I know that it, I feel like if, if you didn't grow up journaling in a way that felt private and personal and like optional, then, then it, it might feel like a strange habit to start. And I sometimes feel that way after taking like even mini breaks from it for a little while, but like journaling has been the greatest tool that I've found so far for songwriting. Cause I, I will write sentences that like mean nothing to me in the moment and then reflect and be like, that's, either a concept or a lyric itself, like for um, my song 21, for so many of, of the songs I've written, but for 21, like there are multiple lines that are just like verbatim pulled from my journal. And so I, I bring it with me everywhere. And if I'm like too scared for some reason to like take it out of the house uh, out of fear of losing it, it's like, I'm always on the notes app on my phone. And, and so um, and voice memos too, just like writing everything down. Um, although I was in a session with this uh, artist and songwriter who I've admired forever. And she, um, it was the first time we worked together and, and she told me, which I didn't know, but like, she's never written down a lyric ever and somehow retains Interesting. all of her work in her head. And so like maybe journaling is not for all of us, but like for me, I need it. To that's yeah, but that's unusual. That is not. I hope so. I'm like, I literally yeah. was in there with her, and I was like, Am I doing something wrong? Yeah, and then like yeah. you know, take it from me. You get older, you can't remember what you had for lunch. So okay, you're, you're gonna I to... I believe you. I will keep journaling to remember <laughs> my meals. Yeah. Um, this is a fun one. Now we call it vintage vinyl, so uh, it doesn't have to be vinyl, but it could be CD or whatever. But it's a an album or record from maybe way back when in the last century or so. That's something that you know, informed your creativity that you still find yourself maybe going back to and, and drawing from now? Yeah. Um, I have, am I allowed to do two? Cause they're kind of, yeah, okay. Yeah. My no two rules. are, uh, blue, um, Joni and, and man on the moon, Kid Cudi, uh, and both of those albums, like, very separately but kind of I feel like our bookends for the kind of emotions that I started connecting with when I like began really like caring about music myself individually and and like listening to my own playlists instead of what my parents had playing in the house and um and no matter like 
how much I listen to, uh, those are kind of pillars in, in my, um, I don't know, what do you just, how do you, what is this a record collection? <laughs> <laughs> like it is my like virtual collection. Yes. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think like how raw Joni's music has always felt uh, that has made a huge impact on the way that I uh, try to record everything in, in the studio um, and keeping it super intimate because then you have nowhere to hide if you do that. And then Kid Cudi, I feel like is the best at making something so dark and strange feel really nostalgic and good at the same time. And it's this like interesting dynamic. Cause I, I think being a, a young woman and growing up with like, uh, you know, super bright pop music. I, um, as a writer, I've always struggled writing about like happier feelings and, and, um, and the reason I love Cuddy so much is because you want to like kind of dance to his music, but he's talking about like how hard it can be when you're like by yourself at night and there's no one else around and you feel like the only person on earth and like, but you're dancing. So I've been recently trying to like kind of aggressively reference that. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, I think they're both geniuses. Yeah. It's funny. I've, I've talked to a, a, a lot of songwriters and I, it, the common thread is usually that you, when you're young, like you, you get very sad about breakup songs before you even know what a breakup is. And you don't I even fully, know. yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think that's real. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's uncanny. Yeah. Um, yeah. This last one is just something that's inspired you now. This doesn't have to be music, but it certainly could be. Um, but anything, whether it's music or television or film or books, uh, just yeah, something that um, made you take notice that we can check out too. I, uh, I've been watching since the beginning of quarantine um i started watching a lot of ghibli like miyazaki movies um for the i think like as like a the escapism of like being in a gorgeous animated world versus like the super bleak dark times that we have all experienced this past year and um and it's funny because like i because i was saying earlier like the reason that i love doing this like job so much is because it's uh, I get to write all day long and the other parts are hard for me to kind of like wrap my head around in terms of the visuals like all the creative and marketing and like stuff that I just have never gravitated to naturally um especially like when you sometimes have to consider like um unfortunately like the brand aspect of which I'm very uncomfortable with and I like I don't I don't believe uh, or I never think about, but sometimes having to, I was, I found that watching these, these Miyazaki movies uh, inspired me a lot in terms of thinking about some visual stuff, which I know is, I don't know if that's exactly the question or if it's more about the writing or whatever, but that's just been a kind of um, unexpected reference for me this past year is going really deep into like, seeing how how there are such like pure morals of all of those stories and something about the hopeful nature of of the plots of all those movies is like has been super inspiring to me recently yeah that counts that's great yeah well, we, <laughs> we made our five uh questions now but for you what's happening in your world like what should we be looking for this year what's what's what great things should we expect in 2021 um, I have just been writing so much music, so, um, a lot of new songs, uh, and, uh, uh, project is the goal and, um, that's kind of all I can say, but I just can't okay. wait. And I'm super grateful to anyone who's listened to anything that's out so far. And I can't wait for shows to happen. Hopefully if, if things are looking up and safe, like shows will be a thing this year. So that's exciting too, considering I've never played one before so we'll see but yeah that's what's up well yeah hopefully we'll see you sooner than later maybe out on the road I and if you, certainly if you come through the east coast we'd you know happy to visit with you and um, again that. you know great like i said I, I one of the highlights of my job is getting to learn new music before i talk with people and and mm -hmm. um exploring yours was fantastic i miss you i'm sorry mm -hmm. i think is a fantastic just Thank honest you. and raw and a great vocal Thanks. and um 
it's really great to have you on this program and, and get to know your artistry. Thank you. And thank you again for taking some time. To thank do you. Appreciate. Thank you for having me. I genuinely am so grateful for your time. And yes, I would love to hang at some point when we're in the same place. <laughs> in the same, right, the same place, part of the world. Well, thanks yeah. again, Gracie. And, and thank you everybody for watching this episode of Mini Masterclass. That's Gracie Abrams. I'm Mark Conklin. We will see you next time. I hope you learned something new or interesting from our special guest. Be sure to check out some of the music and inspirations we discussed during our conversation. And now we want to hear from you. We need you and your music more than ever. So we're encouraging you to make some music, make a video, post it, and tag us. It can be practicing your instrument or learning a new one, write a new song or learn a new cover song, make a beat on your computer, sing a cappella, whatever you like. Just video yourself, post it, and tag us at Prue Center and use the hashtag Grammy Museum EXP. We promise we'll check out every single one and might even repost a few. And join us each weekday at 3 p.m. for more of Grammy Museum Experience Prudential Center's mini masterclass. Until then, make music and make a difference. I'm Mark Conklin. So long.